Thanks for the opportunity to speak with Polymer Update's market expert interview series. Of course, the short-term effect of COVID-19 was to reduce plant operating rates dramatically, and those fell to 50 to 60 percent for bulk and commodity petrochemical producers around the world in the second quarter. It looks like volumes bottomed in April or May for Western Europe and U.S. producers. They bottomed a little bit earlier in Asia Pacific, and we are seeing sequential improvement. But another odd outcome was a leveling of the cost curve for producers that had an advantage based on gas-based feedstocks. Um, they saw a little less of that advantage back in March and April when oil prices fell and gave a little relief to the oil-based producers. Many of those effects have renormalized now, so those cost advantages are evening out. The longer-term effects are really on cash flows, and that's the threat that we face right now. Although some producers were able to draw down inventory and boost their cash flows in the short term, the reduction in earnings that we're seeing really threatens a lot of their cash availability through the rest of the year if we don't get significant improvement. For the median petrochemical producer around the world, gross profits fell by around 30% in the second quarter. Earnings per share for the publicly traded companies fell by almost 50%. So without that ability to draw down inventory and generate cash, those companies will face more challenge having enough cash to fund all of their operations through the rest of the year. And that's a really big risk. In the longer term, there are some supply chain effects. So we certainly saw more concern about having local supply or secure supply. Down into specialties, uh, there's also certainly a lot of concern about whether you have a single source in things that you may not have many options to procure. So there will be some supply chain adjustments going forward as longer term effects as well. As far as measures that companies will take to adjust, at least in the short term, again, cash flow is key. So companies are cutting their capital spending back to the very lowest level that they need to maintain safe operations. Um, they're also considering cutting dividends because uh, it's certainly a large use of cash and coming out of several years of ample cash flows, many companies have left healthy dividends to pay their shareholders. Uh, and they're also refinancing, particularly if they have access to a market where interest rates are very low. We're seeing a lot of issuance of debt and financing to raise cash. Uh, and many companies have lined up uh, plenty of borrowing uh, facilities. So certainly we'll see some change to the level of investment. Of course, at the moment, we're also not seeing the use of cash for buying competitors, uh, that sort of thing. But Again, that is an effect that may take place later on if the strong pursue the weak. COVID-19, particularly in terms of stay-home behaviors and obviously consumer preferences, changed a lot of things about the world that actually give rise to many new opportunities, both for upstream pe petrochemical products and all the way downstream into packaging, of course. I think many of these behaviors will slowly revert but most experts seem to be saying that they won't completely do so in the consumer space. So certainly we're seeing a lot more distribution to the home level and a lot more preference for cleanliness. Remember, COVID-19 showed the world again how important our products in the packaging chain are for keeping food safe, for medical and hygiene applications, and again for shipping and logistics. And shipping and logistics are industries that are just beginning to adapt to the after effects of COVID-19. You're starting to see distributors like Amazon plan for more small local distribution hubs. As those effects play out, companies that can innovate into these new opportunities, I expect will take share from those that don't. Even if some companies are protected from competition historically by maybe their feedstock position or some geography or political aspect, Really, the winners in the end will be those who can identify these new changes in consumer preference for hygiene, new needs in logistics and shipping, and innovate right into those opportunities. So for organic investment to come back in a significant way, you need those investors to be persuaded that plant utilization is sustainably going to rise, that demand has caught up with insufficient capacity and so that they can actually see real pricing power in a way that doesn't reflect just a push from short-term moves in feedstock costs, but reflects tighter plant utilization. On the side, it's interesting to observe that the publicly traded stocks of many of these producers are well off their bottoms. Companies like BASF, Lion Del Bissell, Reliance, Dow, these big global producers are in some cases even up year over year. But focusing on the organic cash flow story, 
you're really looking for both this current cutback in capacity to create tighter conditions and of course for us to dig ourselves out of this hole in demand. Nobody can handicap the course of the pandemic, but it does seem that we're seeing sequential improvements in demand. Again, non-durables have been very stable. Durable demand is becoming pent up. Unless you see a resurgence of the virus later in the year, perhaps due to lower temperatures, it does look like it's unlikely that the demand destruction from those measures will continue beyond mid-2021. It looks like we're starting to get beyond those and mitigating factors are beginning to shape up getting into a time when you're more likely to have something like a vaccine. So we're digging our way out of the demand hole. Uh, again, lower capacity investment will start to take hold. And in our own view, sometime in the middle of next year, given current conditions, it looks like we'll start to cross over to where, again, those organic investors can see that utilization can be higher going forward and there's a margin available for new capacity. So then we expect, as you see that pricing power come back, and again, it is driven by supply demand, money will come back into the industry. From a recycling point of view, cheaper energy and cheaper virgin resin create short-term challenges, but I think those things will pass. In the long run, consumers have been reminded of many of the benefits of the entire petrochemical industry, safety, healthcare, medical, packaging, and clearly they remain on a track to demand a smaller footprint from the entire industry on the planet. An intense focus on design for recyclability is what I expect will arise, and I think it's going to encompass partners downstream in the consumer packaged goods space. We need to devise products that allow for customization, but also standardization, simplify reclaiming them, sorting them. I know our industry is investing all the way from molecular recycling down into the resin space to try and deliver the benefits of these products over and over to consumers. And I think things are aligning to show a real leap forward in innovation. So give it a little time, but I think many of these trends are on track and it's about time that they all come together coming out of the crisis.